today's episode is about digital SLRs and some important accessories that I think you may want to consider to add to your camera to help make it a little bit better for shooting video with. Anyone who's ever picked up a digital SLR and tried to shoot video has realized straight away that this feature was obviously an afterthought in the overall design. Of course you can pick up the camera and just start filming with it, but in order to make full use of the video feature, you're going to want to add some accessories to make it a little bit more practical for filming skateboarding. These days there's a million accessories available on the market, a lot of them are very expensive, quite often it's overkill. I've narrowed it down to three items that I think will really help when you're filming skateboarding. So the first accessory I want to talk about, it's kind of an obvious one, is an additional microphone. Most digital SLRs have terrible built-in microphones. I think the best I've seen so far is on the Lumix GH2, which does have a stereo mic built in. But even that's not the greatest. It's only good if you're in a pinch and you don't have your other microphone with you for whatever reason, or your battery dies on your external mic. So you can use that, but I don't recommend it. If you can get a good external mic to attach to it, it's definitely going to up the quality of your audio a lot. In this test, I filmed the exact same trick at the exact same time with three cameras. We had a 5D with a built-in mic, we had a Lumix GH2 with its built-in stereo mic, and then a 60D with an additional Rode stereo mic uh, added to it. Uh, hopefully you can hear the difference between the quality of these three sounds and uh, see for yourself. Uh, getting an external microphone definitely will be worth the investment. Rode and Sennheiser seem to be the mics of choice, the uh, ones I see everyone using these days. Um, I have a Rode mic, it's pretty good. They are a little bit expensive, it's a couple hundred bucks you're going to invest in these things, but like I said, it really is going to make a big difference in the quality of your audio. Most external microphones have a switch on the back or side that can adjust the sensitivity levels, and some cameras have this ability in camera as well to adjust the audio recording levels manually as well as automatically. I find by having the external microphone set to minus 10 and the internal camera recording level set to automatic, it's pretty good for most skateboarding situations. If you do have the ability to adjust the recording level manually in camera, you might want to play with these various settings in camera and on the microphone to find what works best for you in different situations. Also, one of these fuzzy mic covers will help with any interference caused by wind. When you're filming skateboarding, you're usually outside in the bright daylight and it's really hard to see the LCD screen with any accuracy with all that glare. So you've got to get some kind of a viewfinder going, a loop, an eyepiece, something to be able to look at that screen and be able to check that your focus and exposure is exactly as you want it to be. There's a lot of these loops available. Some of them are very expensive, professional ones, which are great if you can afford them. But as most skaters are on a kind of a tight budget, here are some of the more affordable ones that I recommend. This one even has a handle that comes with it. If you're using a camera that has a flip-out swivel screen, like a Canon 60D or a Lumix GH2, then you might want to try an eyepiece something like this. I made it by gluing a bit of Velcro onto the outside of the eyepiece and then making a Velcro strap with elastic. And this way it pops on and off very easily when you need it and when you don't. When you add the additional weight of this eyepiece, some swivel screens will find it too heavy and want to just hang down. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because if you leave it up in the sunshine, it can magnify and the light can actually damage the LCD screen, which did happen to me. If you look closely, there's a couple of spots on my GH2 where I found this out the hard way. But if you simply tie a little cable tie around the swivel point or even a small rubber band loops around it a couple of times, this will give it a little bit of tension, and that way the weight of the eyepiece attached to it won't make it flop down quite as easily, and you can leave it in certain positions without it getting kind of annoying. But again, I recommend facing it down or away from the sunlight, covering it up. Uh, do not let sunlight get into the top of that eyepiece because it will magnify the light and burn hot spots into your LCD screen, which can be quite expensive to replace. Aside from a regular tripod, which you should have with you anyway, I like to pack a small mini tripod in my camera bag as it doubles nicely as a point and shoot handle for a digital SLR. These little tripods are very cheap, they're only about 20 or 30 bucks, they're lightweight, they take up no room in your camera bag, 
And when you're shooting, it makes it quite handy because you can hold the camera steady and have a spare hand to adjust the focus and the zoom. Uh, they can also double quite easily as a tripod, obviously. You can set it down for that low angle, which is very useful for skateboarding, or even prop it on something to get a slightly higher shot. Lastly, they're also very handy when you're trying to change lenses at grubby skate spots. It's nice not to have your gear always on the floor, so the little tripod comes in handy there too. If you don't have a mini tripod or a handle for your camera when shooting point-and-shoot stuff, you might want to just put the strap over your neck and pull the camera taut. This way the camera will be a little bit more stable than freehand. So that's the three main accessories I recommend getting when you're shooting video with digital SLR. Obviously you want to have a good tripod to keep it stable and if you're doing follow filming you want to get a nice handle but we already covered those in previous episodes so check out episode 15 with Jason Hernandez where he talks about stabilizing your footage and gives you some insight on tripods and such and also check out episode 18 where we talked about digital SLR handles. Other than that, these three items I really think will help improve your shooting video with digital SLRs and um, hopefully some of this information helps you get out there and have fun with your camera. There goes my script. Let's try one more.